So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Glenn Fricker and Mr. Christian Kohler. And it is, of course, Beer 30 there in Germany. Is that correct? Once again. Once <laughs> again, of course. <laughs> all right, so here we are. We've all individually tried out the Isotope RX-8. So we thought we'd get together and share some experiences. And I must say, I, I really enjoyed doing my video, but I massively enjoyed watching both of your videos. Glenn did his video in the machine room here, which was pretty fantastic, considering how horribly loud and hot that room gets with all of those, you know, power supplies running. Yeah, exactly. I, that's what I thought. I'm like, how the hell am I going to get drive home the point that this thing really works well? And I thought, yeah, let's shoot it in there. That's like the noisiest space you've got. And, uh, I thought, what the hell? And I was very impressed with the results we got as well. So uh, practical sense would be if you're like shooting out on location somewhere and you need to clean up background noise, that's definitely the program to use. I'm mean, like, especially like uh, say in our field, you know, if we're shooting on a trade show floor, something like NAM or AES or whatever, whenever we're allowed to do that again, uh, you know, that would be the thing to do in post. I know speaking personally, uh, we use it, we pretty much use it every day. Is that correct, Eric? Yeah, you know, because we supposed to spend a lot of time going to other people's studios and going to events, like you're saying, and you just walk around and everywhere you go, there's a different buzz, there's a different click, there's a different background noise. Um, but it gets used all the time. Guitar tracks that are sent to you with the worst buzz and the harms and all this stuff. And sometimes a simple EQ can take out, you know, ground harm on an acoustic guitar. Great. But a lot of the times, Isotope just comes and saves the day. Now, Christian, with you, I, I really enjoyed your video, you know, focusing on guitars, because, you know, I think of you as a, a guitar aficionado. <laughs> yeah, and I'm using it more and more on guitars, uh, to be honest. And the reason is that these days, most guitarists record their stuff at home and only use a real studio for reamping. So I think eight out of 10 sessions, I'm not recording guitars anymore. I'm just reamping. And I'm getting sometimes the most horrible tracks, like distorted tracks, noisy tracks, hum. And I must say that RX has saved my ass countless times, like, like no other plugin, uh, turning unusable garbage into something pretty cool. It even, it sometimes almost feels like cheating. No. <laughs> I, look, I, I, I'll speak to that for a second. I, I, I have done many, many sessions over the years where you spend at least an hour, sometimes two or three hours, trying to figure out where the hum and the buzz is coming from. And sometimes you're in some of the finest studios in the world and you're plugging in a bunch of mics and suddenly it's going in and, and, and you want to use that one particular tube mic that you love and you've been excited to use and it's got a freaking buzz on it. And, and you're, you're sitting there changing out, you know, oh, my God, it's, I've got, let's lift the ground and it doesn't make any difference and it's something else. And, and then, of course, there's situations where you're tracking vast numbers of musicians and you don't have time to troubleshoot everything and you just go, ah, you know, and you just kind of flying by the seat of your pants um, live. I mean, live sessions. I mean, obviously that's not much of a problem at the moment given the uh, current circumstances. So we are actually giving one away for free. So there will be a link down below um, where you can enter to win it. Um, she's very generous of Isotope. I think we have a couple of examples. We're going to show Glenn's uh, example from his video, which I think was fantastic, you know, in our machine room. And of course, um, Christian, you have a couple of examples as well. Right. I think the most impressive one is uh, the D-Clip plugin. Let's just start with the clipping. Let's have a listen to those guitars here. So you can clearly hear they are clipping. There's a plugin called RXD Clip. And it's the most idiot proof thing you have ever seen. It looks like this. I haven't even touched it. The quality is on low. Let's have a listen. And this is nothing but fantastic. The clipping is simply gone. And yeah, if you, if this wasn't drastic enough for you, have a listen to this file here, which is totally clipped.
Awesome. An instance of D clip. Nothing but mind blowing, right? This has saved my ass so many times. Here's another vocal example. This vocal was recorded in a live room and it has that bathroom ambience. Have a listen. Face while you die and swing. Which I don't want to have. There's another no brainer plugin, of course. This one is called D Reverb. I've just touched the reduction here to get the right amount. I haven't done anything else. Let's have a listen. Face while you die and swing. A little more. Face while you die and swing. Perfect. Reverb gone. Before. Face while you die and swing. And after. Face while you die and swing. I feel guilty. It's just so easy to do this. Here we have Anna from a band called Of Colors. Female singer. Screamer. She's holding a SM7 in her hand. Speed on the back, she says I'm Mr. Roo. Romantic, happy, fantastic. Speed. We can hear a lot of poop, poop, poop plosives there. And you can get rid of them by reducing the bass, adding like a low cut filter or a dynamic EQ, removing the bass frequencies. Sometimes that works, sometimes not. But why don't we just use this plugin called RX Deplosive? And I haven't even touched it. Let's just have a listen. She says I'm Mr. Row. Romantic. Happy fantastic. She says I'm Mr. Row. Romantic. Happy fantastic. Before. She says I'm Mr. Row. Romantic. Happy fantastic. Yeah, fantastic, right? <laughs> It just works. It just works. Fantastic clip. So, Glenn, give us a little bit of uh, um, preamble. Tell us about how you came up with this idea of going into, well, one of the noisiest rooms in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh um, what? It wasn't my amp room. It was. Uh, it was just. It was just your bathroom. Also, the machine room. Yes, uh, dual purpose facility there at, at Spitfire. Well, like I said, I was just kind of scratching my head thinking, okay, how am I going to demo this? I'm like, obviously, RX is great for taking out guitar noise, as you say. Could have really used it last year when we were at Harmony because that had the worst RF interference I've ever come across. The place was a bit of, night of a nightmare to track high-gain guitars. But uh, I was just thinking, it's like, well, I don't even know. I didn't even know if it would work, to be honest with you. I didn't know. A lot of noise removal software, it's kind of a law of diminishing returns. You can only have so much noise in your signal to take out before you destroy the original signal, what you're trying to keep. This worked out pretty well. Like that room is really freaking loud. And for some, I don't know what they've done, but they managed to pull it off where you can take an awful lot of noise out of your signal and you're still going to get most of what you're trying to save and without too much artifacting, which is really great in my opinion. Hey everybody, how's it going? So I'm sitting in front of the world famous SSL 4000E mixing console. It's been on countless records. You're very familiar with how it sounds, but it has a secret. This is the part about the SSL they never tell you. This gigantic beast of a power supply that's loud as hell. Now, the cool thing is, even though I'm recording my voice in an environment that's noisy as hell with all these fans going on, I can still remove that noise with a click of a mouse. This is the power of Isotope RX-8. All right, so I thought I'd do part of this video in the loudest environment I could find in the studio. Yes, the glorious SSL power supply. It's a wonderful console, but wow, is this ever freaking loud. But the point I'm making here is the technology really works. It's definitely saved my ass on more than one occasion because I've been using RX-7, the previous version, over the last year, and I use it on every single video I make. Isotopes updated the entire suite to version eight, and I wanna show you guys how I use these tools in my day-to-day -day production with my off-camera mic. This is the setup I'll use for my monologues for viewers' comments and rant videos. It's usually a small diaphragm condenser just out of the camera's frame, running into a preamp with a lot of gain, usually 50 to 60 dBs of gain, and then it's hitting two compressors on the way in. In this case, a DBX 160 and then an 1176. Needless to say, all this signal processing adds quite a bit of noise on the way in. All right, so we're at the desktop and I wanna show you guys 
what I use to treat a monologue shot. If you listen here, we've got a lot of gain on the mic and those compressors are going. And you can kind of hear some fans, cooling fans on the, on the lights in the background, that kind of thing. The more I watch Glenn, the more I... Needless to say, the signal to rate noise ratio is fine. I could probably get away with it with a little bit of background music, but uh, we throw in the denoiser. This is just unreal. We don't even have to do anything. It just, it's got this adaptive mode here and it's gone. It just figures out what the noise is and takes it out. The more I watch Len, the more I realize how much. Now, my other favorite control here is the breath control because I use an awful lot of compression on my voice on the way in. Like I said, two stack compressors, there's a lot of, <gasps> you know, any breathing noise gets picked up and just amplified. Just before I, I go to go to yell at the camera. Anyway, well, <gasps> so we kick on the breath control. Anyway, make sure you watch next. And we just set our target level and our sensitivity. Anyway, make sure you gone. watch next week when we do more reviews. They, uh, by a, the way, you just see it stomp down on the breath there. And if we we output the breaths only, this is what's getting taken out of the audio. I don't know what the hell Isotope did, but this just works absolutely amazing. I use this all the time. I'm usually a little less aggressive with it. I only want to get like the really nasty breath noises out. Anyway, make sure you watch next week. Yeah, we because there can definitely be a point where it's more is taken out of the original signal than you want. So be sparing with how you apply this, but it can go a very long way. And of course, the mouth declicks as well. This gets all the <laughs> under control. So let's turn this on. We're going to throw clicks only on. So that's what's being taken out. By the way, make sure you watch next week when we do more reviews because they are getting a lot better. And for those and so that's the three main plugins I will use on a typical monologue. And I've been using these since version seven. Absolutely love them. Use them every single episode worth their weight in gold. Another application where RX is absolutely invaluable is for reducing noise on metal guitars. Now, I use the best reamp boxes on earth from Signal Art, and even they introduce a slight bit of noise when you start connecting an amp through a reamp box and then back into your computer. Some of it's just unavoidable. Let's check out what RX-8 can do. All right, so here's a, here's a track from that Engel Fireball demo I'm working on. Not a huge amount of guitar noise, but I just want to kind of demonstrate just how awesome this truly is. We've got our two rhythm guitars here, and there's a little bit of noise that we pick up just before we hit the main track, and we can take that out using the RX. So here's the original sound. You know, just a little bit. And... Like I said, uh, normally I wouldn't get this much when I'm just miking up a guitar amp straight. With reamping, you're always introducing just a tiny bit of noise. So here's the signal one more time. Again, we're getting wonderful signal to noise ratio. It's not really something that's like embedded in the sound, so it's like super noticeable. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a guitar denoise, and what we're gonna do is we're, we're just gonna take a sample of the amp noise here at the beginning. Let me just mute this out. So that's our noise. Let's just hit the learn. And boom, we got it. Now, a lot of, say, less potent denoisers will take a lot of the top end out of your guitar signal. I'm not really hearing an issue with it here. Again, the noise level is pretty negligible. It's, it's pretty tiny in comparison to some of the one I've had. Once again, take it out. That's how much is being removed. And of course, last year we were in a studio with probably the worst grounding issue on earth, and that was Harmony in West Hollywood. Anytime we tried plugging in a high gain guitar into anything in that studio, it became a total nightmare just because of all the electrical interference going on. Now here's the track I got last year trying to record something at Harmony Studios. And oh yeah, the, uh, the noise level here is just pretty much bananas.
Now you can hear that buzz. It is embedded right in the sound. We can only take out so much. We might wind up taking out a little bit of the guitar here. I don't know. Let's take a listen here. Take the sensitivity up. We definitely lose a little bit of top end there. So, well, this can fix a lot. It's a little quieter. I don't know, maybe with a little bit of boost. Let's try sampling this one more time, just in this little section here. Let's do a bit of learning. Okay, we got the amp noise learned. taking a lot of that noise out. There's absolutely no question about it. Whether it's taking too much out or not is really up to you guys. The fact that it does it even that well is great. Of course, one of the great things about Reaper is you've got a mix control right here. You can bring some of it back in if you want. Hey, that's pretty good right about there. 69% seems to be the magic number. Now, if you're recording a lot of acoustic guitars or cleans, you've got controls here for squeak and pick, and you can get all that extra unwanted crap under control. Now, RX-8 isn't just for cleaning up background noise and noise in your guitars. It's also fantastic if you do a lot of voiceover work. I was asked to do a character voice for the XRL-8 cartoon a couple weeks back, and RX-8 came in super handy when it came to handling things like vocal plosives because my voice is incredibly susceptible to hard consonants, the P's and the D's and the K's. They're very, very tough on microphones and a windscreen can only get you so far. For some strange reason, when I get close to a mic, I'm really susceptible to plosives. If I pull this off, I go P, K, D, P, T. You know, you get that thumping effect and it, it's pretty wretched. I mean, the windscreen can help here, but I was recording this cartoon voiceover the other day and even with a pop filter in place, it's still not enough. And uh, we got a nasty pop right here. I'm gonna take this off and show you guys exactly what's going on. Then tag you from the studio page. Yeah, the T and the P there, it's pretty nasty. Oh, hard. Then tag you from the studio page. So we, uh, let's hit on the old uh, D-plosive. And you just get a couple sliders here to work with the sensitivity and strength. And then there's a frequency limit, so it will only affect frequencies below this, which is usually where the plosives reside. Listen to how much this gets cleaned up. Go hard, then tag you from the studio page. Make sure you're go hard, then tag I have no idea how in the hell they are managing to pull this off, but it certainly works. These are the effects I applied to my vocal when I turned it in to the guy doing the cartoon. I knew I could just turn this on and I wouldn't have to go through every last breath that I took. I know it's just gonna do its job. So if you wanna get stuff out the door, yeah, this might be a good choice. Also, we've got a, a D-clip in place as well because I do get a little enthusiastic from time to time. I got a bit of a scream thing going on here at the end. You can see I'm kind of clipping a little bit. And we take Mixed Man! Max Mixed Man! Yeah, the character's name is Max Mixed Man. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the threshold down a little bit and it's going to give me a little count of how many clipped peaks it's uh, fixing. Mixed Man! Max Mixed Man! There we go. Now, I'm not hearing that much of a difference. I'm sure I was just clipping very slightly, but this will definitely bring back a much more clipped signal, which is freaking amazing. Now, the one that really grabbed my attention, though, is the RX-8 standalone editor, because if you're into doing like forensic audio or serious, serious cleanup work, you definitely want to get your hands on this because it's got the entire suite of effects built right in including the one that really got my attention, which is the music rebalancer. You can use this to strip vocals out of a mix, or you can isolate guitar sounds or bass, or if you don't like the mix you got from the mastering engineer, you can actually use it to turn, say, your bass guitar up and down, or your drums. Check this out. So we've loaded up the standalone editor, and first thing I love about this is you can just resize the interface, which is great for old guys like me who are wearing very, very well-concealed bifocals. When the joys of hitting 50, don't worry, it'll happen to you too. Just wait a while. 
So we get the whole suite of modules down the side here. There's just some absolutely unbelievable tools. If you're into like doing serious forensic work, this is what you want to get your hands on. This is going to make your life so much easier. But what really got my attention here is the music rebalance module. Now this isn't available as a plugin for Reaper. It's just available on the standalone. So what I've got here is that track we did at Harmony last year, like a Fujin, and this has got some vocals on. I kind of want to just show you guys what we can do here. Like if you're into karaoke, this is uh, definitely your dream program. What we can do is we just separate the vocal out here and hit render. We're gonna set this for best quality and hit render and away we go. So this will take a second to render, especially at best quality, but it's well worth the wait because the results are absolutely incredible. The possibilities for this particular module are just about limitless. Again, if you're into karaoke, you can take the vocals out. But if you want to analyze a mix, listen to the guitar sound specifically. You can separate that out and listen to it. You can check out drum sounds. If you want to learn somebody's guitar part, you can separate that out from the mix. So here's the here's the mix with the vocal and without. I'll, I'll just go back a little bit before we strip that out. That's absolutely unreal. Let me uh, let me back that up a bit. Do a little undo. Here's that same section. And redo. Absolutely unreal. So we're gonna undo that again. And what we're gonna do is we're just going to separate all the different parts of this mix out. And we're going to crank the separation control up a little bit. And this is going to take a couple seconds. And render's done. So what we get now are four tabs where we get a vocal. Percussion. Definitely hear a bit of the vocal cutting into that. And it's not exactly what I'd call perfection, that's for sure. You know, if you take the separation knob up a bit, I'm sure you can get a little bit better. Like there's definitely some good, some drums in with those guitars, but it kind of gives you an idea where the guitars are at. All kinds of fun, though. Now, I think that snare's a little bit loud, so we're going to try something maybe not the craziest here. We're just going to adjust the drums down a little bit here. Let's uh, let's do a little preview. Maybe bring the bass up just a tiny bit, 1 dB. I mean, that's a pretty minor adjustment. Uh, let's render that at, at best quality. And we'll listen to a little bit before and after and just see how much of a difference it makes. Again, this would be a really cool tool, say, if you get a final master from somebody and you get something about your mix you just can't live with, you can throw this up and make the adjustment all by yourself and not have to hire anybody to do it. So for you perfectionists out there, and believe me, most of you have come through my studio already. Yes, somebody designed this with you in mind. All right, let's uh, let's roll it back before we make the cut and take a look. Here we go. Oh, we go. Yeah, that's a nice balance going on. We'll just uh, undo that and take a listen to that again. So we take that down just a bit. So use sparingly, that can be an extremely effective tool. That's very, very impressive. Uh, next up, we're going to go to the shot at my kitchen table and I'll show you what D-Reverb's all about. 
Now, while I'm here in LA, while we're waiting to get the room set up that I can work in, I'm kind of working temporarily at the kitchen table. And this space isn't exactly what you'd call ideal for voiceover work. I mean, like take a listen to this reverb trail. And I think this represents a typical environment that a lot of us are gonna wind up recording in because we don't always get to pick and choose where we get to record or do an interview or whatnot. Now, the RX-8 D-Reverb plugin really comes in handy here because I can take that sort of sound, apply it, and I get this instead. And everything just tightens right up. Even if I move the mic back from my mouth, I can still get that room reverb under control with minimal effort. This plugin has definitely saved my ass on more than one occasion. If you're doing interviews in the field, it is an absolute must have. Now I've been doing this whole sequence in this room with the fans going. I just want to show you guys how practical this is. These fans are still running. That's how awesome this whole software suite is. Now, one of the big disadvantages of going out into the world and recording stuff in the field is we don't always have control over the acoustic environment we're working in. Fortunately, we've now got tools that allow us to keep the background noise and all the extra crap that we don't want in our signal under control. The RX Suite by Isotope has to be hands down the best set of tools I have ever come across for cleaning up audio. Get your sound under control, get your copy today. Links are in the description below. I'm out of here. I agree entirely. Um, what One of the things um, I've been hearing a lot um, from Alan Myerson was talking about this a couple of days ago and, Tom, and Tommy Vaccari. These guys are working out, I mean, you know, I work in like, you know, pop rock. You guys work more both in like really, you know, much heavier music. Um, now, Tommy and Alan, Alan's a film mixer. And Tommy works with like jazz musicians and they both have found it to be huge because due to the pandemic, they're getting people sending in cello parts from home studios. And noises obviously is number one, but one of the biggest things is every single room they're getting has a completely different ambience. So imagine- and that's where D-River would come in. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so right. that's huge. So I think, you know, I've, I've made this assumption and I really can stand behind it. You, uh, you, you guys can disagree with me if you, if you like, and that's totally understandable. But I think this plugin is a business. You know what I mean? I think if you have this plugin, you can, you, you, you know, because I have so many noise issues that I used to send to mastering engineers. My friend Warren Sokol, I'd send him something and say, can you get rid of this buzz? Can you get rid of this, this blip here? This, you know, we had one the other day where we did it, where we had somebody's uh, computer start going beep in the middle of their voiceover. And I used to have to send that to mastering engineers and they'd send it back to me and go, you know, it just took a couple of hours, it's 150 bucks. You know, my assistant did it. I mean, how many of those do you need, do you need before you just buy the plugin and now you're the business and people are sending you stuff? I would have been forced to stop a lot of sessions without RX, that's what I can say. You know, you get some shitty eye tracks, they are clipped, they are noisy. The problem is people, I think if they're recording their DIs at home, they don't realize how noisy they might be. But once you send those DI tracks through a screaming high gain amp, you will hear it. And you can hear their laptops, their fans, their CPUs, whatever is in their house on their guitar tracks suddenly. And you can't use those tracks without denoising. Back in the days, I think I just stopped and said like, re-record please. Hmm. With all the consequences, you know, which, means yeah rescheduling a whole production maybe rescheduling a release with a record company stuff like that and that's what i mean with save my ass uh, this plugin has like very often just kept me rolling and you know time is money in the studio yeah it's always interesting when i see people commenting well it's expensive it's like yeah it's not definitely not free and it's not super cheap but i i cannot overstate how much money it's actually saved me Exactly. That's what I meant. And I mean, it's just a pain in the ass if you have to stop a session for technical reasons. If you're in the middle of a creative process and then they send the whatever, the bass track or the guitar tracks in and you have to stop working because of that. Terrible. Yeah, before there used to be some other products which, uh, um, you know, still exist and like the denoiser function and they would learn like the buzz. You remember those? I'm not going to call out mm -hmm. anybody's mm -hmm. particular product. Mm -hmm. and, and 
I would still have to apply an excessive amount of EQ as well. So I would still reduce the quality of the signal. You know, maybe I wanted something like an acoustic guitar and there was some kind of weird fan or something buzzing in the background, you know, all kinds of stuff, clean guitars with a buzz. And I would be able to remove a portion of that buzz, but I would always have to wipe off too much high end and then get in there and pull out really narrow frequencies. It it was always affected the sound far too much. And this is the first time I've ever... Yeah. yeah, such a compromise. And this is definitely the first time I've ever used a software where I don't feel like I've compromised it, you know, to, to a degree where it makes it unusable. But dear guitar players, don't uh, use this as an excuse, you know, to keep on <laughs> sending me and other people the eye tracks. I don't, I don't need that. <laughs> Please don't do that. If you leave your strings <laughs> flapping in the breeze, I'm still going to make you re-record them. I mean, another one is the deplosive. Oh which yeah, just works, oh. you know, because in 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 the metal world, you have a lot of singers or screamers, you know, who prefer to hold a microphone in their hands. Which never sounds better, but if it makes the performance better, sure. fair enough. So a lot of death metal people and stuff, they you know they want to hold whatever. What are you talking about? SF cupping the mic, which is one of Glenn's favorite things to talk about. Yes, microphone yeah, right, sounds so much better when you do this. <laughs> <laughs> sounds so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. That's an, and that's terrible, of course. But I mean, the, the SM7 you're using right now is actually the only microphone I I let people hold because, like the the, the diaphragm is so um, far away yep. uh, that it actually sounds okay. But still, you will get those boom, 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 boom yep. effects. And yeah, extra and there kick is, drum. Uh, dip <laughs> exactly. I mean, you can use like a low cut filter, which also works, but again, with compromises, but deplosive. Mostly I just put it on the track and don't touch it and it works. Awesome. That's amazing. I, I got a plus one on the deplosive thing. That will definitely save your ass. I mean, like if you've, again, if you're out in the field or you just have something you can't redo and you've got a bunch of plosives over it for whatever, because I mean, like this is the other sponge for the SM7. If you've got the smaller one on there and it doesn't quite get all the plosives out, um, yeah, deplosive will definitely save your ass. Um, I got to go back again on the D-Reverb as well. I, there was a case where I did an interview once with Ola England there at a couple NAMs ago, and we were in a hotel room with a lot of reflective surfaces, and I get the audio back, and it was terrible because there's just so much reverb on the voice. I'm like, what the hell is going on? A little bit of RX D-Reverb really did a lot. It really saved, saved my bacon and uh, saved the video. Because that's one of those things you can't redo. Somebody's in town only for a couple of days and has a very limited schedule. You're going to want to, uh, you know, get the best you can while you can, so to speak. So uh, it's definitely worth it for me there. That that's probably my, my absolute favorite bits is the denoise, the dereverb, and the deplosive, and of course the declipper as well. Because again, recording metal, you just cannot get everything under control all the time. So I've got something I want to show you. This. You can hear this little squeech here. I would never leave something like this in a recording, but let's just say someone sends you a track like this. What can you do? Of course, you could like like open it up and try to remove this one and then move this here and crossfade it and then time stretch so the next one goes here. But it's a lot of work and will take a long time to sound natural. But there's a better way to do it. You can use the RX editor. So they came up with this so-called RX Connect plugin. You simply load that plugin. You select an audio file here and load the plugin. Here we go. So, and then you pretend that you're bouncing the file. And what happens is, the file opens up in the RX editor. And this is a spectrogram. Down here you can blend it and you can also see the waveform. Let me just quickly explain this, what we are seeing here, in case you're not familiar with something like this. So down here we have the deep low frequencies and up here we have the highs. And the brighter something gets, the louder it is. So down here, you can see the low end energy of the palm mutes here as well. Up here, it's fairly dark, you know, because guitars don't have many highs. But you can also see the pick attack here, which is mainly here in the mids. And right here, 
you can see that little quick we want to get rid of. Okay. And all you have to do is to select this. I'll try like this. And I'm using, you can see on the right side, you see all the plugins and even, even more stuff. So I'm going to use Spectral Repair. And Attenuate, that sounds good. Strength, let's just, let's try this, Render. Not perfect, but a lot better. Then you go to Send Back and here you go to, to uh, process, check, and now you can see it is gone. Let's have a listen in the mix, if we can still hear it. So much better. And now, the, now I hear something on the right side. Here, okay. Like, so you can see, you can easily repair stuff and you can easily send files from your DAW into the RX editor and back. We're using we're using the same plugins. Have you guys tried that music rebalance thing? Yes. Oh yeah, I used it. I used it just the other day. Um, we did a Peter Gabriel cover, and um, we we had like an availability issue. Like so, we didn't have the the singer only had a certain period where they could come in. The drummer only had a certain time they could come in, and I hadn't even started the song. Because I'm like so freaking busy, like doing all the thousand things we do. So I we took Eric loaded the track up and just put in, you know, uh, tempo mapped it, and then we took the track and separated out all the elements so we could remove the vocal, so the singer could come in and sing over tracks, and then we tracked to it. So it's just, and then the drummer track to that, and then the last thing I did was add the guitars. I did the guitars at the end. So the singer was singing over an instrumental version of the original track. The drummer played to the vocal and the original instrumental, and then I replayed all the guitar parts. So it's it's a lifesaver. I think it's going to be for anybody who's watching this that's a you know YouTuber or you know does covers for a living. It's going to change your life. Try to figure out the bass line. You know, put it up. You know, because there's always that sort of crossover point with guitars and basses. You're like, what's going on? Use that. It's miraculous what it does. Yeah, I love it. I have used it in the studio because very often bands bring their pilot tracks and then they leave their original click on that pilot guitar track, which is super annoying because I want to use my own uh... click from Cubase. Right? And this is perfect. You just whoop, uh, take out the or take down the drum fader and yeah. the click is gone. Before that, that's another function wow. that used to be in RX uh, seven as well. I think it's called D bleed or something. Is yeah, D bleed. Something like that. Where yeah. you can, where you have to use the standalone version for this, and you can load uh, two tracks and analyze them, and you just tell, uh, for example, like a snare track and a hi hat track, and then you tell RX to remove the hi hat bleed from the snare, which also works pretty well. It's just a little more wow. complicated because you have to, you know, you have to use the standalone software. You have to bounce the track before, but it's it's pretty decent as well. And that's what I did before. So I just used, I told the guys to give me the click. And then I used the, the, the WAV file with the guitar and the click, and the click was gone. So that, I think there's a lot of things you can do with uh, music rebalance. Yeah. And what about you, Glenn? What, what have you used it for? I'm just just messing around a little bit like say of course I, I go back to clay man yeah I just want to kind of solo those guitars up a little bit and hear what's going on you know I think that's great as a as a reference point where you can actually go into a mix extract the guitar see okay what what's what's going on here what's going on there you know and again you, you make a point about the whole bass thing and you know metal mixes especially bass guitar is incredibly important it, that's what makes your guitar sound heavy is a great bass tone it's like okay how can we take a listen to this and just kind of separate, see what's going on, see how everything blends together. I think it's an absolutely indis invaluable tool to have on hand, especially if you're scratching your head and wondering how to get certain sounds. Oh, it's going to be massive. I think for people that are into tuition stuff as well, you know, if you're mm -hmm. trying to work out parts and you're, you're teaching, it can be massive. Um, again, it's, it's interesting that here we are, you know, we, we spend half an hour talking about 55 different things. That's what it feels like. It does so many things. And um, 
yeah, I really stick by that behind this idea that it's it's a look. I know it's it's not cheap, but it's 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 going to save, and it already has saved people thousands of dollars in time. For me, that's the one thing I don't have any of is time. I'm always trying to figure out how to do it. The fact is, I had to get a video out for a Monday morning, and we came in on Sunday night to play the guitars. That's what was happening. So, and and the Ugh. and the drummer and the singer were only available on the Saturday. So it's so you know that was that was a lifesaver. And and there's no way I could have if I was going to put out a Monday morning video. There's no way I could have what call them up and say, "Can you come in? I know it's three a.m., but I need you to sing and do <laughs> the drums." It's just. You know, it's just, it's a reality and, 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 and it's such a lifesaver. Um, I think of all these stories like Shelly Yakas telling me about, I suppose it's interesting because I'm thinking about this because Shelly Yakas told me about one of my favourite guitar parts is off uh, Dire Straits, Romeo and Juliet. There's a lead guitar part that goes, ba -ba -da -da, ba -ba -da -da, and it's just as the song fades out, it's this beautiful solo tone that Mark Knopfner has. And... Shelley told me it was a nightmare because he just played it once on a fade and, you know, him and Jimmy Iovine were like, that was genius. However, Mark Knopfler had turned his guitar down with a high gain, high gain on the amp, turned it down to almost nothing, so all they got was... <laughs> and he said mixing it was a disaster because he had to keep, like, bouncing it with the high end removed, trying to... You, you know, this is 19, oh. what, 80, 81, something like that? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, it, you know, it, it it ends up being amazing, but, you know, you think of the studio time that that must have taken and the amount of energy, and now something like that would have been like, zip, okay, done, next. <laughs> I was just thinking, don't forget, we will be using RX on this video. So I'm always using it that... What is it called? Mouth declick thing? Because I'm producing a lot of noises. I, I don't know and what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to say, yeah, I use RX on every single video I do uh, for my voiceover work, for my on camera microphone, all that kind of stuff. I use denoise and the breath control. So, because I compress pretty hard on the way in, because I do tend to get a little shouty from time to time and uh, <laughs> I keep things from clipping out. And uh, the thing is, when you compress hard, that brings up your breath noises. So a little bit of R RX uh, breath control really goes a long way. Are you hearing this, Eric? Yeah. <laughs> Are you hearing this? <laughs> I'm usually not yelling at people and not screaming. You know, I'm a very polite German guy. Uh, like, So I have never used that breath control thing. But uh, yeah, that mouth, mouth, what is it? Mouth? De-click. De-click, right? Yep. It's... Once again, plug and play. I just throw yeah. it on the channel and, and don't care. It just works. It removes everything that's happening in my mouth. And uh, and also also denoising. I remember uh, Huge. on our last video, mm -hmm. uh, always denoising. There's always some background noise when we talk here. The de-esser can help as well. Say if you want to EQ something nice, it's a nice little counterbalance or when things get a little too spitty, you can get that under control, which is great. I haven't I haven't tried the deesser, but basically because it, yeah, it seems to be so such an ordinary plugin for RX standards, you know. Fair enough. Uh, I haven't even tried it. I'm sure it's great. I can't remember how many different functions there are, but I I've, I'm sure I've just like slightly scraped the, the the surface. But it has saved me real money, not just in time, like I was saying, but also I used to send those things out to mastering engineers to fix. Um, because they had all the clever software and, you know, and also that sort of perception, you know, that I naively had that, you know, you needed like the room with the, you know, these $100,000 speakers that you can hear all of the, and you know what I mean? All of that smartness, yeah. all of that intelligence is built into the plugin for me. And like you've both been saying, you know, a lot of the time you just open up the plugin, find a setting, click the button, process the track. And uh, that seems kind of scary for guys like us that have had, you know, long careers. We don't like anything <laughs> yeah. that automates it. Feels it. Like it feels like cheating. It feels like cheating. It feels like, yeah, it is. But for, for things like voiceover stuff, if, if it can be done like that, why the heck not? Because I like detail work, think, but I don't, not just for the sake of it. <laughs> no, no, no. If we can skip that, amazing. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm sure they're using, it's the same technology you find in those modern headphones. Uh, have you tried those? Uh, do you know what are they called? Like noise, noise reduction. Headphones. 
because I've also had some some really mind blowing results there with the Bose headphones where you go like, how is this possible? You know, you're somewhere, car, train, plane, whatever, and everything's gone, and the, the music still sounds pretty much the same. I mean, I wouldn't mix on those headphones, but it's it's I think it's the same principle and really mind blowing. All right, thank you, gentlemen. That was a lot of fun. Um, we've got one of three copies that you can win, so go down below to win a copy of this incredible software. And of course, please subscribe to both Glenn and Christian's channel. Christian and Glenn's channels are down below. There is a link down below to subscribe. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing, and we'll speak to you all again soon. So long, farewell. Have a uh, au revoir. Au revoir. Adios. <laughs>